from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCready. I deserve to be on TV. Welcome into Hand Raise, guys. Neil McCready, Chase Parham here with you on this Thursday night. I've got on uh, TV One, it's countdown to kickoff, Ohio State, Minnesota on TV Two. I've got Chase Parham's favorite team, Coastal Carolina, just putting it on the Citadel. They're wearing patches on their jerseys that say, suck it, Parham. Citadel, basically, what, that, was, that, was, that was at least like from a copying standpoint that was frank underwood's alma mater right because he was from the sentinel <laughs> so it was basically the citadel there. he was oh, from that. the citadel yeah <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i didn't think about that <laughs> so i'm looking for looking for tennessee i'll find it in a minute okay so we're putting tennessee over here we're putting ohio state minnesota yeah over because here. i don't have the nbc streaming why is ucf here. delayed what's going on oh uh, it's a thunderstorm bad weather really yeah like okay. lightning and stuff they, they don't need to be playing okay. they're not being wusses <laughs> right. they, they yeah i mean they could get struck okay so that's Gus's debut. That's that's Gus's debut. Okay. Uh, NC State leads South Florida seven to nothing. App State leads East Carolina seven to six. Djokovic is playing. Hold on, so Bishop cat. Sycamore fired their coach because that's the answer to their problems. <laughs> <laughs> Although you would probably get fired if you had a hundred thousand dollars out on an arrest warrant. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that could that get would do you it. Molding young minds and among whatnot. other things. Uh, Matt yeah. Corral story up at RollGrove.com. People proud of his press conference today. Presley says the wardrobe tonight for HRG is a vibe. It is kind of a vibe. You got the Tulane thing going. You're representing South Louisiana. I am. I've got Iowa and the Muddy Water camo <laughs> hat. <laughs> There's stuff. <laughs> we just. <laughs> I'm a little. I'm. I'm kind of out of it. Out of it today. Um, got a so what's really the uniform. Uniform video dropped. What are they wearing? Powder, powder, white. Yeah, that's what we thought. Yeah, okay. that's what I figured. Yeah. Well, good for everybody involved doing the two home colors. Yeah, let's not let's not be idiots. Let's let's let everybody be, do what they want to do. It'd be great TV. Oh, it'll look awesome. All red against contrast. Powder. Yeah. I mean, kudos to all involved. QB one for Rebs in twenty twenty two coming up on ESPN. Who are we talking about? Uh oh, Jack Miller. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, welcome into the show. We're brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. You can you see the numbers up there. If you live in the Oxford Tupelo area, um, Comer Heating Air is the place to go. I've been using them. I think Chase has too yep. uh, for yep. years, long time, and uh, they're great. Service is phenomenal. The product is great. Um, I've told this story about Comer a couple times. We have had air conditioning units go out in this house at the absolute least opportune times, which is probably. Par for the course. Isn't that just kind of like, whenever it is in the summer, though, it's the least opportune yeah. time. The first one went out the day of Campbell's graduation. Okay, well, that, okay. And it was like, enough. hey, I called Eric, and I was like, hey, man, I know this sucks, but I need some help. Fair. And he was like, okay. He knew my deal. And I was like, hey, I've got to leave here at 4 o'clock. I'm just going to leave the house unlocked. Do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And he came over and was like, look, it's not salvageable, but I can get you through the night. By pumping some Freon into it. Oh. And then we'll come back and replace the yeah, unit. We'll figure it out. Yeah, sure. And so I was like, yeah, what, what, do whatever. It was, you know, you get desperate enough. It's do whatever. AC is one of the things whatever. where you just go, sure. Yes. Yeah. The I'll figure yes. it out. And then the second one, um, it was the week of the uh, Ole Miss Arkansas game, Campbell's freshman year. And so Campbell was bringing, was, yeah, I think two thirds of the Arkansas campus to town. <laughs> And the damn thing went out on Thursday upstairs. And it was, hey, I need help. Bad. And they came. I mean, it's like, it's like, I was like, it's dead. Don't try to fix it. Just replace it. And it was a pain in the ass. But they did it. They'll do that for you, too. They're great service. And if you live in the Hernando, South Haven, Memphis, Olive Branch area, call the people at Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. They're the same people. It's just different names. The companies merged. They kept the names because they've had the names for half a century yeah sure so uh those are the two numbers you see them there uh comer southern uh we're coming to you from the clark ford studios clark fords in amory mississippi 662-257-1900 the number call it ask for Corey clark tell Corey what ford product you're looking for he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours right to the bottom line no hassle no haggle you get your quote 
and the rest is up to you. 662-257-1900. Giant crowd in Minneapolis, which is great. I'm, I've said this on the show earlier today. We, we taped a um, uh, Butcher versus the Spin Instructor earlier today, and I told Campbell I was so excited for all the college kids mm-hmm. at Ole Miss, at Arkansas, at everywhere that they get to go to games and be in student sections and be kids. And so it's cool to see the Minnesota student section packed. That's awesome. They're going to get their ass kicked tonight, but it's okay. I'm still excited for the kids. I really am. So kudos. It's football, and it looks normal and feels normal. After a big 10 year of empty stadiums, it's cool to, to look out and see people in the stands. Uh, let's see. What other people do we need to mention before we get rolling tonight? Um, for this show? Yeah, you guys will join us on the Rafters Music and Food Hotline. Yeah, sure. Uh, rafters all weekend long. I bet it's packed in there tonight. A lot of football on the screens starting right now through the uh, through the weekend, through Monday night's mm-hmm. Ole Miss game. NFL starts next Thursday. Uh, obviously, Ole Miss has a home game next Saturday. So a lot of people heading to uh, heading to Oxford and that kind of thing. So um, check out Rafters on the square in Oxford. Great burgers, po' boys, appetizers, um, great beer selection, full bar, all of that. Rafters on the water at Sardis open as well. Still going to be a pretty nice weekend, actually. Be a great place to enjoy frozen margarita, frozen daiquiri, um, waterfront views, all of that stuff. And... Um, yeah, I'll probably mention some other things as I think of it. Hey, go to deadsoxy.com. They yeah. dropped um, some new socks. Yeah, they can't. Stuff. we can't use the word Ole Miss socks. They can't, but I can. They're kind of Ole Miss socks. They can't use that word. They can't, but I can. What Mississippi, gonna, what Mississippi me? themed red and blue socks. So those are there, 25% off yeah. by using the promo code Rebel Grove. And uh, go to muddywateroutdoors.com if you want a hat like this. They sent me a bunch of camo stuff, which – Everybody in my family finds amusing because I've never hunted in my life, but I love the camo stuff. And uh, in a promo code Rebel Grove there, get 35% off all the new stuff at muddywateroutdoors.com. Yeah, I, we're fine rowing the boat tonight. I mean, I think Ohio State was the bet, but I'm, I, if the Gophers pulled it off, I'd be quite interested. Oh, I mean, I'm tonight. cheering for Minnesota. Yeah. I just don't think they're going to win. I mean, I have no ill will against the Gophers. No. All right, now why is the Tennessee game not on? I don't, know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Flip around a little bit. Yeah, it'll 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 come about. I'm gonna go to the also live. What is Minnesota wearing? Just wear your uniform. Yeah, they overthink it. What See, and doing? Ohio State doesn't overthink it. Ever. Give them credit. Well, they have. They've they, had a couple abominations. But this is solid. No, this is normal. I know everybody in Tuscaloosa hated it, but I liked when Alabama put the hound's tooth on the collar. I actually thought it was a was a, was a, was a really good kind of. I was there that day. There were a lot of people that were worked up. Were they really? Yeah. Over that? Oh yeah. Sure. That happens though when you're kind of bad too, because they were just now kind of getting going at that point. Yeah, right? that was the Mike Shula losing to. Um, he beat Ed Orgeron that day, but that was the year they lost. That was the overtime when it was like twenty six twenty three or twenty three twenty. That day over there, um, they stopped Ben Jarvis Green Ellis on a fourth down. Around the 15, 13 yard line, something like that. That that day. Right, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go for this NC State game and then move around. Okay. Someone let me know when the Tennessee game starts. Yeah. They only yeah. wore it that one day. It was not the whole year then. I just assumed they wore those uniforms the whole year. I think it was just one day. It was just the day Ole Miss was there. So I think I saw so. Them. Okay. Yeah. They may have worn them against Mississippi State too. I can't remember. They lose to Kroon? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that was when I wrote the column <laughs> that said they've been passed and they lost their minds. It was oh that was after the state game. Yeah, it was after the Mississippi State game. They lost yeah. that night. Day. Well, that's true. They didn't have hounds tooth on the uniforms when the bear was there, so you shouldn't have them there. That's true. That's a good point. The the bear becoming an afterthought in in Tuscaloosa because of what Saban has done is remarkable. It, it from 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 how concreted in he was. Did they do the thing at any point? How long into Saban's tenure, or do they? Because I don't think they still they still don't do the whole bear or like this is Alabama football thing, do they? I don't know. Is that I, still in their intro? I would think they still do some of it. You know point. what I'm talking about? They used to open oh, yeah. their entire video. We got with, collateral. We got collateral. Yeah, collateral. That whole thing. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Alabama football. Now I think it's hey, this is Nick yeah. Saban says this is this is my program. <laughs> this is how we do it. Okay. Yeah. Who's number four? I don't know. Okay. It was Nate. Was it not Nate Stanley, the the quarterback, a couple years ago? Oh, what was his name? 
His last name was was it Jay Stanley? I don't. Know. I don't know. He was a hell of a good player though. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, Grind says the older generation in the state of Alabama won't let you forget about Bear Bryant, I and mean, he was really good. All right, I'm a little peeved that I can't find. Uh, Has it started yet? I don't know. Go to football. Okay. Go down. Go to football, and just see what's there. We're getting a lot of options. None of them, however, are Tennessee yet. It should be because Tennessee's. Keep going. You, there, there it is. There, is. there, there we it is. go. All right, here we go. We got the got the balls on. Yeah, like with with Bear Bryant, you never could understand a word. Like you knew he was like eating golden flake, but that was it. Yeah, that's all. That's, that's kind of all we got. Tennessee going with the traditional traditional look: white hat, orange jersey, white pants. Tennessee already in Bowling Green territory. Look at the Vols just just marching down the field. I mean, they, like a machine outclassing the uh, the Falcons here. All right, we got everything good now. We got Ohio State, Minnesota on TV one. We got Tennessee Bowling Green on TV two. We're sort of set. Evan says saw a man wearing a Yankee hat and a Bama jersey. You know that man's also a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or whoever LeBron's playing for. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, I, I'm I'm a LeBron fan. I'm not like, okay. Come on. Yeah. What is Bowling Green wearing? Is that is that a kind of a burnt, burnt red top, or is that orange? It's hard to it's, tell. It's orange. It's it's their ver. It's it's a metallic orange. Okay. I believe is what it is. I mean, if you're in the Mac, you got to have something metallic, aren't they in the Mac? Yes. Got a flag. Isn't it is it? cool to see football back. I got to be honest. Like I'm, I caught myself kind of. Feels geeked. very normal today. I yeah, caught yeah, myself yeah. kind of geeked up today. There was football, and I didn't watch any of Jacksonville State last night, so this is the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. I watched a touch of preseason NFL, not much, but just a little bit to kind of. Yeah, we've like changed roles because I watched a lot of preseason NFL, and then I watched. Um, I had it on. I wasn't locked into it because I was interviewing Pete, but I had on Jacksonville State and. and UAB. Like I told you, UAB's not bad. Bowling Green suits are okay. For the Mac, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's it's, it's an okay look. That was a weird play. Bowling Green's slow. Really slow. Well, really that's what you slow, really slow. That's what you begin to realize is just how slow What happened? Nothing. You begin to realize just how I mean nothing <laughs> happened. You begin to realize just how slow Mac teams are. That play was kind of broken and still picked up six. It, it, it. Yeah, third and one for the yeah. Vols at the Bowling Green six. Presley says, I'm here for Neil's excitement of football season finally starting. I'm I'm glad I, it's I mean, here. Yeah, I mean, it's... All right, Vols score on their first drive of the season. Okay. So they're back, national champs. Yes. We want Bama. They'll get them here in a few weeks. Like, not a terrible crowd. I'd like to see a little bit of the upper bowl, but for a Thursday night, that's a good crowd. Yeah, let me look. It's a pretty decent crowd. Good for them. They're pumped. New regime. The start of the climb. <laughs> here for- yeah. Well, it's a Thursday night. There's a lot of drinking going on. So for people, you want to run through what all we have on the, the preview show tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Um... I'll probably hit the button pretty early. I've got. Yeah, how are you doing that? I would think just before eight would be my guess. So this is watchable, quote live, but everything's pre-recorded. Yeah, so it's going to be live. It's but... the easiest way for us to get the stupid thing on YouTube. If we're honest, yes, that's the answer here. Yeah, because I'm I'm not. One... Otherwise, we have to like really edit this thing. I'm not one thousand percent confident about doing it the other way. Okay. I'm I'm close to a thousand, but I'm not all the so way. Let's there. not have a problem on this show. Yeah. So I uh, got an hour and fourteen minutes with Pete Deweese. Okay. Of hardcore football. Those of you who love X's and O's, who want to understand what it is that Ole Miss is trying to do to Louisville, that understand want to understand what it is that Louisville is trying to do to Ole Miss, you'll want to uh, you'll want to dive in on that. So about an hour and fourteen with him. Spent 24 minutes with Ryan Brown. 
We talked about the big games in the SEC. We talked Alabama, Miami, LSU, UCLA, um, Georgia, Clemson, Ole Miss, um, Ole Miss, Louisville. Did about 45 minutes with Jeffrey Wright, kind of a big picture national thing. And then I uh, did a half an hour with Ben Mintz. So all of that on the pregame show. Some gambling with Ben? What we doing? Yeah, we talked a little gambling. So once the season gets rolling, starting next week, Ben's going to do kind of an NFL segment. Because there's only so much you can talk about with Ole Miss Austin P. for God's sake. I mean, there's only so much you can really say. And so we're going to do some NFL. We did we talk some NFL, talk some fantasy, talk some stuff like that. So we'll do that throughout the year, and um, it'll be good. Yeah, I can get us an MPW digital that's transparent to make it look the same. Yeah. I've, I have one here somewhere. I, what happened with me was I lost the file. You had that one and couldn't find it? I had, well, I think I accidentally ditched the file. Oh, and, really? And for whatever reason, it will not let me recover it. Oh. And you're right. It would look better the other way, but I just don't have it. I've got it somewhere, but I don't know how to move it over. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send it to you right now. Just while, okay. While we're doing this. So, pretty good guest. Yeah, like... Uh, Told him he says heavy lineup of guests for a little old potato log podcast. Pretty good for for just a couple of guys that are sponsored by a convenience store. I mean, <laughs> I, I thought so. I mean, honestly, I was, kind of thought about it myself. Um, the stuff with Pete though, y'all is really good. Um, you with need this, you need to check it. Okay, do we want the state logo? Is that the one that looks best? Yeah. Is that is that, is that right? Yeah. As opposed to like the the script with the little bolts out from it. So Whatever like, you want to do. Okay. I'm just, you can send both. Okay, just curious. We can do it right here live. We can edit this puppy. Okay, I'll download a couple. You gonna email them to me? Uh, sure. sure. Why not? Yeah, Jeffrey's good. We talked some conference stuff. There's some conference news today about the Big Twelve wanting to add teams from the from the AAC. Mm-hmm. And I gotta be honest, I'm not exactly sure that that's going to be as automatic for the AAC teams to leave as people think it is. Well, I mean. You got to tell me if I'm those teams what it's doing for me because if you're you almost got to wonder hey are we better staying in the AAC and just taking some of the Big Twelve teams when the time comes. Well, and here's the thing, Texas and Oklahoma have real leverage with this because Texas and Oklahoma have votes still in the Big Twelve, so and they can say hey listen fellas this is so funny you want to you you want them in cool we want out oh you you don't you want them in but you won't let us out we're not letting them in now that's funny. So how do you want to do this? And that's where the TV people then go, okay, well, if Texas and Oklahoma are out, we sort of want out of the contract now. And okay. so there's a lot of lawyers that are in rooms running up billable hours looking at each other going, I'm not really sure how this works. Mm-hmm. And nobody is sure how this works, right? No, no one's sure how it works, although. You have them. Okay. Let's we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I sent Neil a couple to fix our issue here. We're just all hanging out, so it's all good. Oh, yeah. It's just a Thursday night. We're watching football. Wolf pack up 16 nothing. No, they get – They get stayed here soon. I was going to say, yeah. is it next week? I don't know. Where's it at? Startable. Is it? To yeah, you knowledge. all in now, Mark? You all back? Excited? Pumped up? You want Georgia? Get them? Yep, got okay. them. They're going to be really big, so I have to be careful on size. Yeah, I know. They're, they're I'm, huge. I'm about to. That's what she said. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Where I are you playing at, Mark? I'm about, to, nine holes. I'm about to try to figure this out. Here we go. This is this is going to be a little uh, a little jolting. Y'all just chill out. We're just hanging. Which one would you suggest? I I mean, I, the other one might look better just because – you know, whatever, but I, I don't the know. The one with the four or without the four? Oh, hold on. I don't know what the, which one's which. Because I can't. I've got them on a, on a list. Oh, you don't have them, whatever. And I can do it on the icon and look at it. Hold on. The f- one that says full is the one that you're used to. The other one says word mark. Okay, which one do you want me to use? Uh, One of them has the state logo and one doesn't. That's what it is. Okay. One is just like a script with the bolts out from it, and one is the, our normal state logo that we're used to, the full thing. Okay, it's trying right now. There it goes. I'm going to move it around so I can see where it is. Okay. There it goes.
All right, getting close. Yeah, the word mark one might look better because there's less room on the bottom than on the top. Because it's about the same height as our log man over there. All right, it'll, you'll be able to see it here in just a second. What do you think? Okay. Oh, really big in the middle of the screen. I guess you fixed that. Yeah, I'm fixing it. Okay. We're waiting. <laughs> I'm like 15 <laughs> seconds ahead of you, I think. Um, I think it has to be that way because I wonder if the other one, the problem is that you might not be able to read hardly anything, but if the MPW, MPW, because it's black font on black background okay. on the other one, you know what yeah, I mean? I do. So I think we got to have something that pops. So this one. Yeah. I also have this in a red state, a green state and a bright blue state too. Well, hell. We have a collection of, of, just, of colors. We can here. just experiment. Frankly, the the red might pop a little, too, just because. Just saying. Big thanks to Hilden. He says, let's get the Super Chats going and make J.G. Tate a little jealous. Enjoy the show. and glad football's back. Thank you, Hilden. We agree completely with every word of that. He says, uh, J.M. says, consider this my podcast subscription for the month. I Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Let's get Jay on as a guest every now and then. G. Pitts for life. Yeah, we're not Patreoning you guys or anything, so it's, no, it's, all, it's no. all good. <laughs> Barrett says this show is starting to look like a NASCAR <laughs> with all the sponsorships. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What? Vroom, vroom. Really proud of our Blue Delta Dead Soxy live stream tonight on the way to... I hadn't thought about that, sponsoring yeah, yeah, the live yeah, stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a thought. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Evan G says, what shape is Tennessee if Shano gets hired years ago? 7 nothing, Ohio State. Yeah. Minnesota can't match Ohio State's athleticism, which is sort of the story of the Big Ten. Um, I think Tennessee's in better shape today than it is – Right now, if oh, there's if, no doubt about that. If Shano gets the job, I think there's at least a little bit of stability. I don't know that they're they're not what Tennessee fans want them to be. They're not great, but I do think there would have been more stability in whatever that looks like. He's a good coach. I mean, he's done a really good job at at Rutgers. Rutgers, by the way, um, tons of water damage on campus, real close to the stadium. Their game got moved to Saturday. Well, I saw from Ben's Twitter that Hoboken got hammered with floods and stuff today yeah. and last night. Yeah, the I think the hurricane killed more people in the Northeast than it did in Louisiana because really? of flash floods. Yeah, really. Some power back on right today. Did I see that? Is clearly? that right? I, I I had something sent to me, and I was doing something else, and I could not, I couldn't read the whole thing. But I thought, I thought that was case. Um, um, I will open the phone lines. I need to put the number up somewhere. Yeah, a buddy of mine earlier today sent me a thing. It says some signs of life. Substation near his house, green. Red light at a major thoroughfare near house is lit. And now that hospitals are lit, hopeful that some people won't be far behind. So, yeah, there have been some things uh, activated there in the, in, the, in the New Orleans area. Grind, cheers to you as well. Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Always good to have you um, on our show. Auburn getting started Saturday night against yes. Akron. Yes. The Zips. I'm getting really confused who's playing who in these pay games. This this weekend, Central, especially Mich when Akron and Kent State are both options. Kent State plays A and M. That's correct. Yes. Akron plays Auburn. Yes. Central Michigan plays Missouri. Missouri. Eastern Illinois, South Carolina, East Tennessee State, Vanderbilt. Yeah. There might be another one too. Kentucky. Uh, who do they play? Kentucky plays ULM. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will say this. Either Tennessee's offensive line is awesome or Bowling Green's defensive line is atrocious. They still running again? Yeah, the quarterback literally stopped. But it's 30, redirected it's him. 34, right? Yeah, 34. 34 and a half, one or the other. Yeah, I'm not doing the Staples thing. I, I can lose no. Neil's picks all I want to. I'm not eating a jar of mayonnaise. No, I'm not eating mayonnaise. I will throw up. Yeah. I, Andy threw up. Did he throw up? Yeah. How much do you have to eat? It was like three spoonfuls or something. Oh, that's all, though? Dude. 
But the, but somebody else got to pick the spoon, so it was like the big ladle. <sighs> yeah, it was awful. I couldn't do it. I think you would psych yourself out mentally. I know I would psych myself out mentally. Before it would even I'm, be a... I'm psyching myself out right now thinking about something I don't even have to do. Okay, well, that's... That does look better without the white background. It it's does good. look better, yeah. yeah. I, I always knew it would. I just didn't have it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's, it's good looking. Yeah, so about to be 14 nothing, maybe, Tennessee. What are we doing? We got a, we got a review already? I think so. Coastal Carolina up 31, 31 to nothing to at nothing the half. The Citadel. Yeah, they showed you. That's worse than Eddie Obe at the Citadel back in the day. Covered that one. I don't know what they're replaying here. I guess they're seeing if he was inbounds. Well, he's definitely inbounds. Oh, he's inbounds. There's a green. They don't need to spend so much time on stuff like that. Yeah, just go with it. Yeah, go just with. play. It doesn't matter. An onion. Would you eat a whole onion? Like raw? How long would it take you to get that taste out of your mouth? I would rather eat a whole onion than a lot of mayonnaise. Oh, there's no question about that. Because I don't detest onion. I like onion fine. It, look, there could, they could have just found a dude that really liked onion. But it was at some like event when I was probably in junior high. And they had one of those hypnotists there like messing with people or whatever. And I don't really believe in it, but... They took a guy out of the crowd, did like the hypnosis thing on him, and the hypnosis thing was, we're going to hand you an apple, and you're going to eat the apple. But they handed him a raw onion, and he sat there and ate the onion, acting like it was an apple the entire time. And maybe they just found some dude that really liked some onion. Did he have COVID? Well, not that I remember. Because he could have had COVID and just not been able to taste the difference. Well, it was 1996. Right. so You never know. I mean, there could have been a coronavirus going around. Um uh, Coastal's good. I just. <laughs> Mark says, consider this my fee if I end up calling in and making this an episode of all calls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all calls. All right. Grind has a question. Thanks for another super chat. He says, um, rank the li- likelihood of these rivalry upsets happening in order. Michigan over Ohio so State. So this year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This year. Michigan over Ohio State. South Carolina over Clemson. That's the lowest, no matter what. <laughs> Florida State over Florida. Auburn over Alabama, Mississippi State over Ole Miss. Um, State over Ole Miss is the most likely, even though I don't think any of these are happening. South, oh, most likely? Yeah, or, yeah, rank the likelihood. Uh, if you told me Florida State beat Florida, I'm not shocked. Are you more shocked than State beating Ole Miss in the same realm? No, probably not. Um, I just, I'm not, I'm not up on Florida State at all. I just, I, I don't buy it. I don't think Michigan can beat Ohio State. It's second. Yeah. I've actually got Michigan over Ohio State higher than Auburn over Alabama, even though I don't, neither are happening. Um, Auburn gets Alabama at home, I think. Yeah, I would go most likely State over Ole Miss, but Florida, Florida State's very close. Um, then Auburn over Alabama, yes. then Michigan over Ohio State, then, then South Carolina, Clemson which is South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I got a better chance of growing ahead of hair. Yeah, something like that. Brent Schaefer was not bad. He was was not running the right offense. I know you're super shocked, but it's not the best skill set yeah. for him. And I wasn't that here field. for that, but I I knew the offensive coordinator well. <laughs> you did. He agrees, right? He did. <laughs> okay. He agreed then <laughs> <laughs> when he was actually on the sideline. Yes. Hey, the, the day the day Schaefer committed was maybe the first like really big recruiting day in Rebel well at that point rebelsports.net but rivals at Ole Miss history um that was the infamous day that James Bryant used uh the headline punt punt the cat i believe was the uh, the headline on the front page um when when Schaefer committed i don't even know what that means i guess you're so excited you kick your animals so you punt the cat oh. i believe something like that huh yeah the Oxford Exxon Podcast is also brought to you by Walk-On's Sports Bistro. They put everything they've got into bringing you game day with the taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine like po'boys, gumbo, and voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads. Quality fresh ingredients you can't help but crave. Coming soon in November, Walk-On's Sports Bistro, more than a restaurant, 1735B University Avenue in Oxford. We're also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan's the place to go. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. 
Great lease deals as well. It's Grenada, Nissan, USA.com. You don't have to commit to the full season to sign up for Seven Souths services. They offer single game packages and still have availability for all seven home games. Seven South provides the equipment, secures the spot, and sets everything up for you. They also offer unloading assistance and food beverage delivery on game day. These single game packages are great for those of you only wanting to tailgate for a game or two, and they start at just $225 per game for non-conference, $325 per game for SEC. To get in touch with them, go to 7SouthTailgating.com or call 662-321-1682. The Grove will be open for tailgating this fall, and Game Changer Patch Company wants to help you prepare. Game Changer Patches are the only two-patch system available in the market to stop hangovers before they start. The warm-up patch is used before or while you drink, and the overtime patch is used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients will keep you in the game and ready for your next play. To get you ready for the Grove, uh, they're running a giveaway until September the 8th. All Game Changer patch orders placed online through the website will be entered to win an officially licensed Ole Miss-branded Yeti Roadie 24 hard-sided cooler and a home run bundle of four packs of warm-ups and four packs of overtime. There are also free chances to enter the giveaway, including leaving a product review or following them on Instagram. The link is pinned on Rebel Grove, or you can access it on Game Changer's website in the drop-down menu. Try the patches and enter to win at GameChangerPatch.com. Enter promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. We're also brought to you by ACS. Owned and operated by Clay McNutt in Baldwin, Mississippi, ACS is a complete electrical control system solution provider and a Rockwell Automation recognized system integrator. They have a full-time, dedicated emergency service and troubleshooting staff and a UL508A panel shop. ACS can custom tailor software packages, custom design electrical control panel solutions, and much more. ACS is a full-service AutoCAD services provider and a full-service fiber optic cabling solution provider. To learn more, go to acsllcms.com or call 662-601-4381. Also brought to you by Pinpoint Commercial Real Estate. Pinpoint based out of Jackson. They service the entire state of Mississippi in all commercial asset classes such as retail, office, industrial, and land. Sam Cox and B.B. Mitchell are Ole Miss graduates and they utilize their unique skill sets to execute on assignments and increase value for their clients. This week's property spotlight is on the Village at Madison. The Village at Madison will feature roughly 60,000 square feet of restaurant, retail, and professional office space along with roughly 75 Zero lot line residences with Pinpoint handling the leasing for the commercial portion of the development. To learn more, just get in touch with Sam and BB, 601-586-3220. That's odd. Oh, I forgot Schaefer was at Tennessee, actually, for a second, Mark. That's right. I, I need to put the phone number up. Okay. I was looking for it. There it is. There it is. Okay. Cool. I got a lot of grass. Uh, no, it was not Dan system. Warner. It was uh, Noel Mazzoni. Yeah, it was Noel. Yeah. Dan got that experience later in year two, not year one. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but it's been a long time. So Ole Miss, I, play, I covered Florida State, Miami that day. Okay. In Tallahassee. And uh, the next day, I was driving back to Mobile from Tallahassee, and I called Noel, and I said, hey, congratulations. Because they beat Memphis. Ole Miss had beaten Memphis earlier in the day. It was yeah. their first game. And he goes, for what? <laughs> and I said, you won. He goes, oh, my God. And <laughs> starts telling me how bad it is. <laughs> and they're 1-0. <laughs> and oh. <laughs> I've never talked to a, a coach the day after a win who was as apoplectic as he was. He knew. Oh, he he had seen. He said, I could tell you so many stories. I can't, but I could. And yeah, you know the rest of that story. I do. Gulf Coast Reb says, uh, LFG, boys and girls. I almost said it out loud. I guess yeah. I could have. What difference does it make? Ready for Monday. Let's get Bubba and Corey Clark on the horn as long as they've been drinking this afternoon. All right. I need to pull, make sure this is up so I can take the calls if you call. Uh, I just missed one. The number's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, no. I'm tempted to call this number back. What's the error code? 662. Okay. All 
I can call it. You just call it Verizon? Yeah, why not? Hello? Hey, who do we have? Hey, we were calling Hello? you. This is, hey, this is Neil and Chase. We were calling you back. What's up? This is Trucker Mike. What's up, Trucker Mike? Oh, man. Hiding in Dallas, Texas. Just right there in the middle of the city? No, I'm at a little truck stop right on I-29 here on Little Belt Line. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with that area. Been on I-20 between Ruston and Dallas a few times. Oh, well, yeah, I'm actually heading to, you probably know exactly where I'm going in the morning, Hodge, Louisiana, just south of Ruston there. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jonesboro Hodge. We used to play them in the Jamboree every year at Ruston. Did you? Yeah, yeah J- Jonesboro go Hodge. Da- I got to go down there at the little paper mill there in Hodge, and then I got to go pick up at the paper mill in West Monroe on my load to go home for the weekend. Does the paper mill in West Monroe still smell the way that it always has? Have they fixed that at all, or does it still smell bad? Uh, it, it's, it's iffy. Sometimes I go there, and it's okay, and sometimes you can't stand to even get out of the truck. What's yeah. it smell like? Um, rotten eggs. Really? Yeah. It, it's one of the, my vivid childhood memories was the uh, the paper mill in West Monroe. Because my parents grew and, up and in Monroe. And the flies love it. The flies do? Oh, they're, they're terrible. I, when I go to them paper mills, I, I, I fight them for a week to get them out of the truck. Oh, wow. Wow. So where are you dropping off when you pick up in West Monroe? What's on the other end? Where does the paper go? Uh, I'll pick up and uh, come home for the weekend, and it'll go to Lumberton, North Carolina. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. But it'll have to wait a few days. Yeah, that. Yeah, it'll have yeah. to wait till Wednesday to get over there because yeah, okay. I won't. I won't leave out till Tuesday morning. So. What do you think about the football I'll season? Well, I, I hope the defense is better than last year for sure. I think we're going to do well on offense. Just hope the defense plays a little better, and I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think the defense is going to be better. I do. It's what level of better? It's what I, level of better? Yeah. I agree with you, Neil. They need to uh, keep Matt Corral in a hamster shell and keep the hits to a minimum. Well, I asked him about that today. He uh, did not say he was not going to run. No, Matt's super competitive. But they've they've clearly had that conversation. Well, I hope they explain to him where the sideline, how to slide was, and I think he'll be okay. He 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 said that if he gets into a couple that he shouldn't, Levy would uh would holler at him. Yeah, for him sure. Chill out. Yeah, they've had that conversation. Yeah. Twenty one nothing Tennessee now, no, by it, the way. It's an incomplete pass. Oh, was it? Oh yeah. never mind. Okay. Yeah. So since since the hurricane this week, since I haven't been around the house, uh is is the grocery stores around Oxford have food? Yeah, I don't think this became like a milk and bread situation. I think everything stayed pretty at least somewhat uh packed. Although I I've I've been in some random other stores around Oxford that their their stock has been way down, and I don't know what's causing that. I don't know the reasons for it, but I mean, even like I went into Walgreens for something, and like just shelves, I mean, bare completely. I don't know why. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, some of the brands of truck stops out here getting bare, and I don't understand it because we go into the distribution centers, and there's truck after truck after truck sitting there waiting to get loaded, but. You could pretty much work Somebody's all. dropping the ball somewhere. You could pretty much work all day, every day, right now, right? In terms of demand. Uh, oh yeah, it ain't no doubt. If you're a truck driver out here today and you're not making money, it's uh, you need to hang it up and find another hobby because it's plenty out here to be made for sure. What's the best truck stop out in that area? In Dallas? Yeah, wherever you headed. Uh, none. Okay. To be honest. Gotcha. Uh, I usually, all of the big cities, I mean, the truck stops are overrun. They stay full, and it's a mess. And you, you have to definitely make sure you lock your doors at night because the little mall cop security they have roaming the parking lots at night are 
not the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh, they'll open the door to your truck? Well, they won't, but, you know, the the, the mischief people that come around wanting to investigate what's in the back of trailers or, oh. you know, because, you know, people aren't stupid. They know some of these guys leave their trucks over the weekend and during the week, so you, you'll see people out here trying to break into trucks and that's, that's why i take take my truck home when i go home because i got too much stuff in here g 500 dollars gps evan wants to know the worst state to uh drive in what's the single worst state to drive in probably new york well it 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 depends. Uh, Texas can be bad because, it, you know, especially if you get on anywhere on I-35 or um, I-35, I-45, between the cities, it's just terrible. I mean, you, you can be going through there at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and it'd be like going through Atlanta at 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, God. Jeez. Well, hey, uh, safe travels. Enjoy uh, enjoy the holiday if you get a little bit of a break, and appreciate the call. All right, y'all guys, be safe. Thanks, Mike. That was Truck and Mike. First down, Ohio State. Did you ever think about doing anything like truck driving? God, no. No, I didn't either. I, you know, I hate I hate driving, period. Like, I'll, I'd rather fly anywhere. I, I have no I, no interest in road trips at all. I mean, Isn't it funny? I I don't mind driving at all, but like the idea of of driving as a living, I, no, I, I think no. I'd lose my mind. Frankly, I don't think I'd be good enough at it. Like just yeah. the truck and the you know, I'm, I'm I'm good. I'd be nervous about you being on your phone the whole time. Well, I don't know if I could mean seriously with my <laughs> eye trouble. I don't know that I could yeah. pass the truck driver exam. Oh, that's true. I bet you got to have a certain level of eyesight to. I mean, I'm I'm essentially blind in my left eye. I I, I bet you can't do that. I would be. I think I would be a little worried in my truck at night by myself. I'm sure they all have weapons. Yeah. And I, I would assume if your truck is locked, you're probably left alone. I mean, like it, yeah. it takes a whole another level of trying to do something. I, I think. I mean, no one should be broken into, but I think they're looking for. Less careful people, some idiotic decisions as much as really trying to get in somewhere where somebody's at. Corey says, I'd be stressed as hell going through cities with that rig. I would, too. Like, thinking about driving in New York like or New L.A. York. or San Francisco. Yeah, I, uh, In an 18-wheeler. Having mm. to get over. Yeah. I you mean, almost just have to go, right? You're bigger than them, and you've got to kind of hope. I guess. They get out of the way. Hey, who do we have? What's going on, guys? It's Tommy from Oxford. Hey, Tommy. How are you? Doing well, man. Doing well. Ready for ready for Monday. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think? I, I think uh, I'm like everybody else. If the defense can do anything, I think we'll be pretty good, and we got to keep Matt Corral uh, very healthy. In the kicking game, obviously, Caden Costa. We'll, we're going to detail him in, in depth here in a little while. Make sure everything. I'm kind of proud of us. We've not written one word about kickers the entire preseason. Well, we ain't had we ain't had much to write about kickers in a couple of years. I just I just think at the end of the day, if we're writing about kickers all season, something went something went terribly wrong. Yeah, I don't think Nick Saban spends a whole lot of time worrying about kickers. So. What you got planned for the weekend? Are you, are you heading to Atlanta? Are you watching the game here? No, I'm going to work all weekend. I'm in Ohio now. I'm headed over here to Baltimore, and then, I don't know, I think I'm going to take back off across to Denver after that. Good grief. It's going to set some travel. Without, without, oh. a, without a break, just straight? Oh, no. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> no, i got to take a break every night. No, I know that, but, I mean, you're not, you're not headed home first. You're, you're out till, for that, that whole realm. Yeah, I'm out for a while. Okay. Uh, I, I probably won't come back to Oxford till sometime in October, probably. Yeah. 
Oh, you, uh, well, you got to sneeze. Okay. I like to. I stay out. A, I stay out a little while, and then I come in. <laughs> what's the uh, What's the worst state? Your opinion? Worst state to drive in? Probably Virginia. Really? Why? Well, eighty one's a horrible interstate. I mean, it, it can it can go from being wide open to being completely shut down in a matter of minutes. And then over on ninety five, just DC is horrible. It's worse than forty. <laughs> The road from I can I can speak to this. The road from Richmond to DC is yeah. just an absolute bitch. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. just hor- horrible. Uh, horrible. Horrible. Terrible. There's, there's there's nothing worse. It's I would rather terrible. drive in LA than that road. What states have the the I, worst roads? The actual roads. Texas. Really. It's always under construction. Okay. I mean, I've been driving a truck for twenty years, and Dallas is been under construction the whole time we can't keep up with the growth it's just taking off yeah it is i mean i just <laughs> you and they've got all the signs and stuff messed up out there you're driving around dallas i mean if you you can't follow a gps out there you've actually got to pay attention to signs because if you don't that gps will have you downtown somewhere you're not supposed to be so do you listen to the games, or do you? Yeah. How, how are you following on Monday you night? Can't because you can't watch it, right? You have to you have to turn it on a radio or something. No, I watch it. I've got uh, I, I stream it. I mean, I've I've got ESPN Plus and okay. I mean, all, all that good stuff. I do you mean, do it on a TV? Got, I mean, on, on an iPad or a phone, or do you have some sort of other portable thing? What are you using? iPad. I mean, okay. a lot of times when we play at night, I'm shut down by the end yeah, anyway, yeah. or I'll shut down early. And I'll just, I'll just, I'll just go uh, rent me a motel room and watch it in there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, I mean, most of our big games are going to be on ESPN anyway. And if not, I'll stream it on my iPad, and it's still just as good. Well, hey, have a uh, have a safe trip uh, driving all yeah, over the country. Yeah, you have a good one, guys. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Seven nothing Ohio State. Thirty one seconds left in the first quarter, and then still fourteen nothing Tennessee. They've got an injury though, an offensive lineman that is uh, struggling to put weight on one of his legs here. Um, three minutes left in the first. You like TV too? See, I did it for you. I, yeah, I set that I up mean, just for just for you. I was trying to be nice. I guess nice. I could watch it better. I, mean, I actually could turn and just kind of focus. But I was trying to trying to be nice. Oh, he got rolled up pretty good. He'll be okay. You think he's all right? Yeah, he'll be all right. He didn't. I don't think he turned it. Not that's not looking pretty good for those of us who took Bowling Green on the points. I think Tennessee's well on the well on the way. It looks like it. Of course, what you don't know is when do they go to the depth? When do they say, "Hey, let's let's figure out what we've got. Let's let let's let mamas and daddies see their kid play the first time." There's a lot there. If you had a choice, would you rather have a Clove of garlic or a whole onion? Mm. I mean, it's still a clove of garlic. I think. Right? I think so. Boy, that'd be bitter. I, I know <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't forget that for a while. Hey, who do we have? This is Austin from Atlanta. Hey, Austin, what's up? Not much. Sitting up at Lake Lanier right now. Well, I bet that's nice. It is nice right now. What's going oh, on? It's been a nice day. I had a question for you. Does uh, Kiffin seem pretty relaxed to you guys heading into this? <laughs> did you ever read my caption on the Ole Miss one? I did. Yes. <laughs> I, I I don't think I don't think we frankly know Lane well enough to know whether he's worried or not, or yeah, whether he's else. relaxed or not. Um, yeah. I, I think he's following not really the script. I don't think that's fair, but. I do think he knows what parts of camp where you push them and at what point parts of camp you instill confidence no matter what. Yeah. And you're clearly in the instill confidence phase right now. So yeah. you talk about, hey, I know the defense is better. I mean, I, look, I, I, think he, I think he said a lot in that answer that came off like coach speak, but it wasn't coach speak, is that there are things he likes a lot better about his team this year versus last year. Sure. But until he gets out there and sees it, who knows? Because they're playing themselves. I mean, you you can't grade it necessarily in these scrimmages and these practices and different things. I do think he has a certain amount of eagerness and anxiousness just to get on the field and see if his thoughts and what his kind of predictions are play out as is accurate. I think there's a level of you know you can know your team as well as you can, but until they get on the field against somebody else, as cliche as it is, you don't necessarily know what you have. And I think he's in that stage of trying to confirm 
what he hopes is what he thinks about his team that's better than last year. Yeah, and I just get the feeling this year that he he seems like he, he likes where we're at, and I think he's excited to to run him out there. Yeah, I think um, there's no question he likes this team better than last year's team. He knows this team better than last year's team. Well, last it feels year, like his team. I mean, yeah. Yeah, last year there was you know there was no no spring. There was a weird preseason. You had all the COVID stuff. You didn't have a regular camp. Um, you had all the testing at all times. The season was scattered. You didn't know if who you were playing necessarily. There was. There's a lot of weird stuff, you know, and this this probably feels a lot more normal and he's had this team for a little while. Yeah. Well, I I went to school from 12 to 16 and I don't think I've been as excited for a football season since uh the freeze debacle. So hopefully uh this year goes according to plan. Thanks for the call, Austin. We appreciate it. Said that he seemed chill on uh, Reb Talk. Yeah, <laughs> sure. sure. Whatever. Where's that at now? I don't Is know. It Is it still? It used to be at Bure. I think it's. It was him and Keith and who else tonight? I, saw I don't it. know. It was on our board earlier. Oh yeah, that's. You don't know. He didn't. It's not my cup. He didn't tea. go over there before he came over here. <laughs> no. Would you rather have to eat a spoonful of mustard or a spoonful of hot sauce? Mustard. Oh, mustard. I mean, I, I, I like mustard. Yeah, I have no problems. I mean, do whatever uh, I, you want. I might do that on my own. I mean, a spoonful of hot sauce is a lot of freaking hot sauce. Depending on what hot sauce it is. There's hot sauces that you're fine eating a spoonful? Sure. Really? Mm-hmm. That'd be hot no matter what. What's your... You're from Louisiana, so what's your go-to hot sauce? The one, the Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, you like Louisiana? Yeah. Okay. I like it better than Tabasco. And I like Tabasco. I like Crystal, but... Louisiana has a, and I guess Tabasco has this too. I feel like Crystal has less of almost kind of a, it's not like an artificial taste, but there's there's like a little something in there that's not just heat that kind of bothers me. Almost not really a sweetness, but like almost a something else. And it, 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 it turns me off a little bit. Louisiana is not, yeah, for whatever reason, it, huh. it doesn't it doesn't taste. But I'm not one of those people like, oh, if it's not this, by God. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, no, I'm pretty flexible. Hot sauce is hot sauce. I mean, I like Texas Pete. I like, I like a lot of hot Even sauces. Like Frank's? Yeah. Does that count? Okay. Yeah. Yes, he's he's more of that. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. <laughs> I got to be honest, given some of the things that I've heard, I'm almost curious. You're, you're, you're entertained now. <laughs> I put ketchup on one thing. Otherwise, I don't eat it. Um, I will eat on a fry occasionally, I guess. I mean, that that's true. Sure. Yeah, but th- I think that's all. If you take ketchup and you put hot sauce in it, okay, that now it's good. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's probably similar to sriracha at that point, but similar to sriracha, it's almost getting almost a cocktail sauce flavor at that point. Isn't if it? you added horseradish, well, thanks. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm fine either way. I love oysters. I'll eat them charbroiled or raw. I have Absolutely. No either way. Um, I mean, it's hard to beat a really good charbroiled oyster, though. I mean, that that's yeah. But I mean, a raw oyster, I'm good. I, oh yeah, I for have sure. no hot sauce. The cracker's fine, but if not, that's okay too. Sure, hot sauce, a little bit of horseradish, a couple drops of lemon, in Cholula's fine. It's fine. Sure. Yeah, I'm not a not a huge fan, but it's okay. Do you watch the show? The guy that does he does the interview while they increasingly go yeah, up hot hot, hot, yeah. yeah yeah um really yeah really good stuff um yeah matt sure send it i've never tried that it says trader joe's green dragon hot sauce huh never trader tried joe it. has a great salsa really oh yeah yeah we're, we're, we're horseradish fans grind we're gonna we, we would eat a lot of horseradish yeah i like horseradish oh gosh Robert Max said when I was stationed in Japan, we would go to a Western bar called Cowboy World. Oof. And they had a shot called the Cowboy Killer. It was a shot glass half filled with 151 and half with Tabasco. Well, that'll... What was the name of the drink we used to do all the time? You put the 151 as a flaming Dr. Pepper and you'd light it on fire. <laughs> and I never... And I did tons of them. And I never understood the allure. Kenneth 
Thanks for the super chat. He says, I know this season is going to be better than last just for the fact that I'll be employed the whole season. Well, that absolutely makes it better, and congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah, all the Hot Ones episodes are pretty good. I mean, he he, he does a – is it Sean Evans, I think? He does a really good job with that. He does. He does a really good job. He's very entertaining. Um, the I, one he did with Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, was freaking great. I like hot stuff well enough. There's no way I would get through the whole tin without needing the water or the milk. There's just no shot. I, oh, I would no. have to drink something. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Shaq. Shaq did really well until the last – one or two, and then gay. Started. <laughs> and then it started being funny. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, I've I, I bought a few of the ones that they've had on the show, so it's worked on what they try to sell and different things. But they get to about six, and yeah, it gets it gets real, it's real in a hurry. Well, you um, know, the people are in trouble when on the second one they're already kind of feeling yeah, some like, pain. Hey, you're, you're like, hey, you're not going to make it because they always start with like the classic, and then they'll actually kind of go down. I feel like get a little sweet for a minute, and then. Yeah, like five or six, they start getting into those Scoville units that get a little Here up. Here comes the heat. Yeah, a little up at that point. So. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal was like, I'm I'm not going to change my expression. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't for the longest time. <laughs> and then then it got him. I'm, I'm a big Shaq guy. He's funny. Uh, NC uh, Grind says NC State looks athletic. I don't. Think yeah, I know USF nothing about South Florida, so I don't trash. know what they're dealing with or not. Not dealing. Supposedly, with. They, they have some players. I mean, you know, they're down there. You, you would think they would have a fairly athletic team. Ten nothing, uh, Ohio State over Minnesota. So they're working their way toward the fourteen. Yeah, Minnesota just that's that. Ninety percent of the money in Vegas was on Ohio State. It's a bad matchup. That that line was too small from a putting at risk standpoint for the casino. It's the it's the I know we said this a minute ago. It's it's the problem with that league is that Ohio State has an SEC roster and the others don't. And so there's only two or three teams, Northwestern, Iowa, teams that play a style Wisconsin. Wisconsin that can give them some problems but to win the game you have to play perfectly and then they have to play badly and half the league can't beat them yeah half the league can't do it because they don't play a style that could pull it off either and you're never you're not going to out athlete them so no 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 you have to out scheme them and you have to out physical them and you have to because Indiana did a hell of a job scheming them last year yeah it fell apart there at the end but they did a hell of a job well, I remember Kane telling me that they're just so athletic. You just have to be perfect. You can't yeah. a, a miss and you're done. Yeah. How stressful it was to prepare for them. And even then, knowing that even if you do it everything right, it's going to be difficult. Obviously, no state seat secrets, but have you talked to him this week? I have not. He faces Will and the Eagles Saturday early evening, right? Yeah, I think it's like 6, 6.30-ish. Something like that. Big game for both guys. I'm sure it's a pretty emotional game for both of them. Winnable game for both of them. Sure. It's needed. I mean. The line's like two points. Yeah. Uh, ben says, if you're grilling your steak, how do you like it cooked? I like mine medium rare. Medium rare, and if you with miss, slight, miss on the rare side. See, I'm just the opposite. If you're going to miss, just miss on the slight. Medium side. Medium side, but not much. What about a burger? Mm, about the same. Preferably more like medium. I don't want it medium. I don't mind some pink, though. I don't mind some pink. No. I don't I don't know that I would technically want it medium rare. You think medium rare for ground meat beef is, is too much? Medium rare. Maybe so. Turn your device down, please. Hey, who do we have? Hey, this is Mark from, from D.C. Hey, Mark. How are you guys doing? Great. How are you? I'm good. So I got a question for Chase. This is kind of a golf question. Sure. So are you? T- uh, I'm sure you keep up with like the the Bryson and uh, Bruce Koepka debacle. We uh, talked about in podcasts. Do you thing going on? Uh, yep. So you team Brooks or you team Deshambo? Uh, in the in the vacuum of the the battle back and forth, I would go team Brooks, but. Bryson entertains me way much more than than Kepka does. Uh, I, I find Bryson funny, kind of pathetic in a way, and kind of entertaining all at the same time. I, I think he's good for golf. Um, 
in 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 multiple ways. So while Kepka bothers me less in the middle of the feud, I would much rather be entertained and follow DeChambeau than Kepka. So here's why I'm asking this question. Sure. So I was at the BMW Championship last year, or mm-hmm. actually last week. Sure. So obviously I live in DC. It's only about a 20 minute drive from where I live. So. <clears throat> Every, almost every hole, I, I went back and forth watching Brooks. I mean, they were only like three holes apart, watching Brooks and watching Bryson. And they really just heckled Brooks, and no, just both of them. I mean, just completely, like, it was like, I, for example, on hole number 11, it's a short par three. So Brooks missed like a birdie putt. Um, it's like a two or three foot birdie putt on 11 on the, on the second day. And a guy in the stand yelled, Bryson would have made that shot. And... Kepka looked at him and like gave him a death stare, and then the, like the security went up there and 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 relieved him, like got him out of the stands and he was pissed. I mean, obviously he was drunk, but and then on the very next hole, um, I was I moved over to like ten where I was catching up on Bryson, and then Bryson like made a putt and he's like that away Brooksy and like clapped his hands and like it, it's it's it, I mean I get it's it's kind of com- not really sportsmanship, but. It, it gets kind of annoying at a point when that's really all you hear, and that's real. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people are all following them is because of the feud. Oh, I think it plays out soon. Frankly, I think you can only keep up the shenanigans for so long before it comes even boring. Even to that, and you know what I mean here. I mean, you've got the sidewalk golf fan that's just drunk out there doing that, and that's the only reason he's even there. Is yeah, to do yeah. That. So you that, that's got to run out a little bit. I think Kepka fanned the flames a little bit, and frankly, fanned the flames this week when the PGA Tour came out and said that if they do that specific heckle to DeChambeau, you get removed from the premises. Uh, so I think that... And I kind of agree with it. I mean, I don't really think there's any any, any place for that. I mean, now, now, granted, you can come back and say, okay, they're professionals, they should tune it out. But, I mean, come on. I mean, Well, there's no more drama queen than a professional kind of golfer. They, they don't exist. I mean, everything bothers them. I mean, we're talking about a sport where right. if you click a camera 300 <laughs> yards away, you get kicked out of the freaking golf tournament. I mean, like, come on. I, I do want to know oh, how no, dinner I, went I, this I, week. I got, a, I got a crap ton of videos and pictures yeah. within like a couple feet from some pretty good golfers. So, I mean, they, they didn't really care too much. But granted, I don't have a flash on my camera. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, it's the clicks and the flash and it. things that will get them. I mean, you know, you had Tiger's caddy, Steve Williams, back in the day, take the camera and throw it in the water one time when <laughs> when it went off. Um, <laughs> yeah. Steve Stricker took all the six Ryder Cup uh automatic selections to dinner. So, DeShambo and Kepka have already eaten dinner together this week. So, I'm curious how that went the other <laughs> night. But. It, look, it's an all so, it, it, it's all an act for the money. They've got that player impact say, program I mean, that hands out forty like million. 10, like yes, players, they like produce the most drama because they are like, like one and two or, or one and three right now. So yes, they are all doing this for the cash. They were perfectly fine at dinner. They probably discussed the wine selection. <laughs> they, they're making each other money. <laughs> yes, no, it's all good. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I look look forward to hearing the rest of the show. I'm 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 I, I know I read Neil's picks, and everybody pretty much thinks that uh, Ole Miss is going to be Little Rock. I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, they kind of really just don't scare me. I just think kind of like as, to coin a phrase that Neil says. I think we're just kind of out athlete, especially on offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Louisville, okay, y'all could kind of I guess uh, I know y'all have gone back and forth, but that's that's kind of how I feel. I, I I kind of predict like a 41-27 win. I mean, it'll be close for a half, and I just kind of think Ole Miss just out athletes are kind of in the second half. I think that's a very possible prediction. Yeah, I have no, I have no issue with that. Hey, thanks for the right, call. Anyway, I'm going to hang up and listen, okay. and listen to the rest of the show. Y'all have a good night. Thanks, Thank Mark. Thank you. Pirates beating the Cubs 3 nothing. Oh, good. Two. We're trying to get the fifth pick. You're fine with that? Yes, I want to lose. <laughs> if you can't win, lose. Bowling Green has the uh, the football in Tennessee territory at the 30, first and 10 on our screen. I think you guys are probably a full minute ahead of us, but it is what it is. But look at Tennessee. That defense just like a wall of orange. Yeah, like I've, t- I've either of you smoke cigars. I mean, I I I, I will. I, I'm perfectly fine with it. I used to like them, and I'll, I'll I'll be honest. I had one after I'd had a lot to drink one night. Is that in, the, in New Orleans? No, this was before that. Okay, there was no cigars that night. It was a scotch. Um, after the wine and the champagne. <laughs> yeah. Dinner. 
Um, I remember. Yeah. Uh, no, the cigars, it was here. So it had dinner and then was just had had a buddy in town, went back to the house, like drinking, 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 drinking. And then the end of the night, decided cigars were a good idea. And I don't know if it made it worse or if I just in my head think it made it worse, but it's the worst hangover I've ever had in my entire life. And I tasted cigars for days and it's made me where I'll still have them, but nothing like before then. It completely broke me from it where I. I'm blaming the cigar at the end of the night because I, th- my guess is a really strong cigar on top of that would would accelerate your issues, I think. Probably so. The Oxford Exxon Podcast also brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans. Blue Delta Jeans makes the best fitting, most comfortable jeans in the world because they are uniquely made for you and only you. Raw denim jeans, custom fit, hand tailored in Tupelo, Mississippi. One size fits one at bluedeltajeans.com. Go to the site. Use the virtual tailor and you can be measured and design your newest jeans in just a couple of minutes. And Blue Delta will have you looking fabulous for a football season. Uh, podcast listeners can redeem 10% off your purchase by using the code Rebel Grove. That's one word, all lowercase, Rebel Grove, at bluedeltajeans.com or in the Oxford studio. It's a great time of year to get a pair of Blue Delta's cotton genos in the works. So don't miss out. We're also brought to you by Lamons Fine Jewelry in Oxford, Lamons at 1126 North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford. They've been serving the Oxford area for almost 75 years. From engagement rings to wedding rings to fine jewelry, watches, pearls, fashion jewelry, children's jewelry, collectibles, and more, Lamons is the gold standard in fine jewelry. Visit them at LamonsFineJewelry.com or call them at 662-234-2777. Also brought to you by the College Corner. It's your one-stop Rebel Shop, two locations in the Jackson area. In Ridgeland, it's next to Fleet Feet. In Flowood, it's next to Half Shell. If you don't live in Jackson, it's okay. Go to collegecornerstore.com, plus you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Whether you're tailgating in Oxford or home gating with friends and family, the College Corner has you covered for game day with the largest selection of Rebel gear in central Mississippi. We're also brought to you by Pinnacle. Go to mypinwealth.com. That's M Y P I N N wealth.com and find out all of the incredible services that they offer. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and so much more. Again, mypinwealth.com. Also brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you're thinking about traveling this holiday season coming up, it's already September. It'll be November, December before you know it. If you're already thinking about next summer, you want to get, take advantage of some of the deals that are out there now for next summer, you can do that. Just get in touch with John, give him some parameters, give him a budget, let him give you options, and know you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. We're also brought to you by Service Specialist. With offices in Ridgeland, Canton, Jackson, and Oxford, Service Specialist has been connecting candidates and employers since 1967 as the oldest staffing company in Mississippi. Whether you're a new college grad or a seasoned professional, whether you're in engineering, dentistry, accounting, law, manufacturing, human resources, or more, you should contact Service Specialist. If you're a recent grad without much experience, reach out to Service Specialist. They're always looking for candidates that have potential and want to learn and get their foot in the door with growth opportunities. Look, Mississippi's a small state. A service specialist always knows about jobs that never get advertised. Prospective employers looking for candidates, you probably should call too. If you're looking to hire quality talent for your company, service specialist has names and resumes ready for your perusal. If you're thinking about looking for a new job or you're looking to relocate to Mississippi, but you have some confidentiality concerns, Call Service Specialist. No referral fees for those searching for a job. You have nothing to lose, so call Service Specialist at 662-832-5138 or go to servicespecialistltd.com. Also brought to you by Alpha Specialties, located at 1670 Highway 80 in Pearl, Mississippi. Alpha is your trailer-specific professional. If you want to haul it, they can call it at Alpha. They've got Load Trail. It's the premium brand trailer, the highest quality Utility equipment dump and gooseneck trailer being built today. They also have Hallmark cargo trailers, and they can work with third parties to have game day trailers and concession trailers built just for you. Spare tires and wheels, a full selection of trailer parts and accessories, they all, all types of truck accessories, and they do a yearly trailer service and inspection at Alpha's full-service shop. 
that can repair all types of trailers, concession, horse, utility, enclosed, gooseneck, RV, and more. 601-932-9798 or alpha of ms.com. And we're brought to you by The Rogue. It's your destination for fine men's clothing. Their stylist hand select pieces from top designers. From work to lifestyle to nightlife, there's the perfect something for everyone at The Rogue. All the best items from Peter Millar, Martin Dingman, Duckhead, Jack Victor, Halsey, True Grit, and more at The Rogue. 4450 I-55 North in Jackson. Or you can visit them online at therogue.com. Hey, who do we have? Hey, my name is George. Hey, George. Hey, look here. I have a question for y'all. And uh, I want to I wanna tell a story just to give context. Okay. Okay. All right. See, one time, it was a few weeks ago, I was, uh, it was a real cloudy outside. And I went outside to take a leak. Mm-hmm. And then I just started wondering, what would happen if lightning struck you in the tip of the penis? Um, it would probably hurt, George. The same thing would happen if it struck you anywhere else yeah. in your body. Yeah, you, you, you That's would, not. It's not specific to that yeah, area by any any stretch of the you, imagination. You wouldn't make it. All right. Bye. Bye, George. <laughs> I actually am surprised that our percentage of calls that aren't that is as low as it is. <laughs> I think I mean, about just, it many times. <laughs> just being honest yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where he was going. I had I had I had the mouse in the right spot. I was ready. <laughs> in we, case we, we don't have a dump button like the radio no. stations where you no. hit it and you go back ten seconds and it is what it is. <laughs> How often was that needed on radio? Often. Was it really? Yeah. Your calls? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You had to be. You had to be aware. When it popped up anonymous, I said, the, uh, oh, odds, it was anonymous? "Yeah, the odds are overwhelming." Is that our telemarketers ended up with our number? Ben says someone has survived that. Well, I mean, I'm sure someone has. Minnesota, look at them. Oh, look at Minnesota. On fourth, that was a and, fourth one. and what was it? A fake punt? I wasn't watching. No, it's just a play. From their own 30? Yeah, because why not? Well, that's a good Right? Player. You're not winning. Actually, that's one of the scenes from Die Hard that bothers me. What's that? What's when that? John McClane walks across the broken glass with bare feet, there's just really no way you'd be able to endure that level of pain. It's got a certain Mission Impossible quality to the movie where there's a lot of things where you go, okay, sure. Yeah. You you couldn't walk across and then pull the glass out. You would you you the pain would render you unconscious. I would. A lot think. of nerves in the bottom of your feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we aim to please, Tucker. We had that <laughs> had that queued up just for you. We're we're here. I knew it was going to be bad. I just wasn't really sure where yeah. it was headed. Yeah. <laughs> We tricked our cousin into peeing on an electric fence. Yeah, that doesn't end well. That's not very smart. We used to trick, not trick, we would get my little brother to just run through the neighborhood naked. Really? When he was, when we were little. Oh, touchdown Minnesota. Hell of a catch. That was a hell of a catch. Look at that. Row your boat. He's a good coach. Oh, PJ's a good coach. I don't know that coach. he's a great coach, but he's a good coach. He's a good coach. Uh, yeah, Lila. Lila, if you're listening, you need to go brush your teeth right now. Those teeth aren't going to brush themselves, and you need to brush them. It's getting close to bedtime. The only teeth you're going to get, you got to take care of them. Brush your teeth. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we're, we have to do a little parenting. We'll do some parenting. or Whatever it takes. That's what we're here for. Uh, the Iowa jersey was a gift from a subscriber during um, the pandemic. The I pandemic last year, yeah. yeah. I don't know where he or she bought the jersey. It is a good looking jersey. Yeah, it's I've, grown on me the more I've I've looked at it. I've searched for the white Iowa jersey because I really like their white uniform. Okay, but I can't find it anywhere. They don't get crazy with neutrals ever, do they? No, no, no. No, no, they know who they are. Do they have an alternate uniform? I've, I don't. I've never seen one. Like I've never seen a yellow jersey. 
They wear the black. Like, and the Iowa white. State can get stupid sometimes. Yeah. Iowa doesn't. Bowling Green, 14-3 to three now. Tennessee Now, leads. any points for Bowling Green makes this complicated. Oh, but sure, any, sure. any score for Bowling Green causes sure. problems. If the Falcons here. can just, just score 10 a, or 13. Get a stop thing. somewhere, and yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sponsored by Mark at Oxford Dental. It's a thought. Hey, look. Hey, who do we have? That's Mark Wallace. <laughs> Hey, Mark. <laughs> How are you? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, turn the game on, <laughs> drop the pass right off the bat. But here's the, pro- the here's the problem, Mark, is if they get the hell beat out of them, you're really just not surprised. And if they win like big, it doesn't like it matters. So this game means nothing in all in all ways, right? Oh, I just I just I play golf. I'd rather <laughs> play golf than watch this. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> You know, talking about PJ Fleck. Yeah. Neil, would you hire him, him, him if you were Michigan? Uh. I never thought his act would play at a blue blood, but maybe he's what kind of what they need. Um. Yeah. I, look, I think he's a better college football coach than Jim. Is Marble. he enough though to make them fully transition the way they need to to win? See, I don't know that is is Michigan any different from like Nebraska, where just because you once you won, think it's that level potentially. I mean, what does what does Michigan have going for it that makes you think that? But I guess besides the, big stadium, I'm playing devil's advocate, it's, but it's the biggest brand of the country. Let's be say so. I, I guess let's put it this way: I know they I win, and they have great coaches. What does Ohio State have that Michigan doesn't? Let me play it the other way. It's it's more than fair. Uh, the commitment. What that's my point. Is it, is Fleck enough to do whatever Michigan has to do in those ways that we're talking internal, external, to do that? Because it's going to take. I mean, Harbaugh has not been able to do it. It's going to take no. a certain reliance on a change from a booster, from a regents, from a whole deal that Michigan just has not had this time. I mean, it's very similar to what Alabama has done and what Texas keeps avoiding and not doing, kicking and screaming because they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. I just don't know if they, they try to make themselves out to be kind of above the fray when they're not. Cause I mean, look, I That's don't think point. Rashawn Gary all in. Went, okay, to, so, went to college uh, for free. So I don't think Rashawn Gary played college football for free. No, of course <laughs> not. So here's my like question. They think of themselves. So here's my question, both of you. Both of you. Penn State and Wisconsin play Saturday. If you offered 20 college coaches, the Penn State job, the Wisconsin job, and the Michigan job, you could have one. How many of them would take Michigan? Penn State, Wisconsin, Michigan. Paying the same thing, everything. Same exact salary. Almost all of them. Really? Yeah. I think all of them would take Michigan. I think all of them would take Michigan. The brand is huge. Because you've got to believe in yourselves. If you're not taking Michigan, it's because you don't think you can be the guy to turn it around and you want to be comfortable at Penn State or Wisconsin. The brand it takes a so certain big. level okay, of self-deprecation to take But the brand at Texas job. is huge and it's not working. Well, no, it's not working because they will not commit to it. The Texas Board of Regents is freaking psycho. They get out – they're Alabama pre saban they, I'm not saying Texas can win like that. I'm not saying it's the same thing, but they have the same issues. They have the same problems. Ooh, they they, they want to do... driving again. <laughs> He's sorry. A, yeah, you're okay. You're, you're ahead of us. We're <laughs> yeah. We're still oh, sorry. We're still seven. That's the happiest the you've been the whole time. I've been on the phone. Bowling Green gets a play. <laughs> I want I want it to completely. <laughs> it's already bottomed out. I want it so bad that nobody goes to the games. It's what they deserve. But go on. I'm enjoying the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just think that – I'm not saying it would be the same thing, but I think Texas and Michigan both have different versions of that problem where to figure out whatever their max efficiency is and whatever their ceiling is in 2021, you've got to get out of the way. You've got to get down in the fray, as you're talking about, and you've got to play that kind of, of football as a program, not just as a team. See, and neither one of them are willing to do that. I'm not arguing with you yeah. guys because I know you're probably – maybe you're both right. I don't know. But I'm, I, I'm maybe with Grind here. Grind in the thread says, I think the ceiling at Penn State is higher than Michigan, but both have been on the edge of the playoff. I think if you offer me as a coach the two jobs, I kind of want the Penn State job because other than the whole – and I, and I get this is a – how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln, other than, yeah. 
But other than that, and the further you get away from that, and the further you're not involved in that, I think it's a better job. I think you're also closer closer to players at Penn State than you are at Michigan. But see, Michigan used to in their heyday just murdered Ohio in recruiting because Ohio State kind of went national, and Michigan could go in there. And when Cooper was at Ohio State, he expanded Ohio State's foot recruiting footprint. He doesn't get enough credit for it because he just couldn't beat Michigan. He was a pretty damn good football coach, in my opinion. But he expanded Ohio State's foot and football, uh, recruiting footprint into Florida and into Texas and into California, and he kind of ignored Ohio. And then Michigan went into Ohio and just got player after player after player, and that's how they got really good. And they don't. And Urban, you know, when Urban went national with it, but they haven't recruited Ohio well. That's when Michigan's been good is when they've really recruited Ohio, and they haven't done it. I've always thought just go be Wisconsin on a grander scale. Go find you five bona fide NFL offensive linemen, develop them, get you a running back from Florida, and just try to maul people. Well, to me – You're not going to outspeed Ohio State. You're not going to outspeed them. No, that's kind of the, the, the point with the, the whole Big Ten is that there's three or four products in the Big Ten, Wisconsin, Iowa, Northwestern come to mind, that they absolutely know who they are and they stay very true to their identity. And I don't know that Michigan knows who the hell it is anymore. Michigan no, hasn't Harbaugh's been – Harbaugh's got – They haven't just, been good in a hard. long time. Harbaugh's hiring a different OC every year. He doesn't know what he wants to do. Um, hey, and Go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, but I thought when he came in the league, like, wow, it's going to be Harbaugh versus Urban for 10 years. Whew. Sign me up. And it just never happened. Michigan's Urban identity, changed. though, to win big has to be Ohio State. It has to be – you have to be built like an SEC team. You have to get the athletes and the people. And if you can't do that, now that would be where, hey, if that's not possible and your your expectations are so different. But here's the deal with, like, Wisconsin, sure, they can have a crazy year. We'll see if Penn State can actually get back over the hump in the 2020s and, and, and be a national team that can get into the playoff and do whatever. But a lot of the teams that we talk about having an identity, and now look, every college football team has to have an identity. I mean, Alabama has an identity. Georgia has an identity. Sure. But in the relative nature of the Big Ten that we're talking about, those identities also have a ceiling. Like, we're not worried about Iowa winning the national title. We're not worried about Wisconsin necessarily winning the national title. Sure. There's a certain ceiling that you're putting on that if your identity is not built like a top end SEC team in Ohio State. Otherwise, you're just finding your way to eight or nine wins, and in Michigan, that's not good enough, and you're going to get fired in a few years. So it's whether they can be built and win the other way is the question, actually. You would think with their, with their like we said, their brand, that they should be able to recruit nationally and, and do it, but I don't, I don't think I don't know if they're committed enough. I think their fans are kind of broken. The fan base is kind of broken. Yeah, they'll I go just, to the games, they'll enjoy it, have wine before the game, and they know they. they I mean, you think some of the streaks in the SEC versus Bama are bad? They've beaten Ohio State two times in this century, and one of them was an interim year. Well, to your point, Ohio that, that, that Ohio State Michigan game is like the game and all that stuff. But it's been so long since Michigan's won it that I don't know that I think about it that way anymore. It's it's. I live here, and it was – I mean, it used to be it, – it doesn't really – it's nothing anymore. It's just, you know, they're going to beat them by three or by four or five touchdowns at a minimum. They're going to kill them every year. It's – Michigan ducked them last year with COVID. They knew how ugly it was going to be. Oh, that's right. They didn't play that game last year, did they? They, they ducked them. Michigan bowed out because of COVID. I don't think Michigan really wanted to play last year. I think they were – like – they could have canceled that season. They would have been just fine with it. They didn't seem like they were real interested in playing football for Bowling, the entire year. But Bowling Green tried to get cute on second and nine. They're setting up. I, all I'm thinking about is the 34 and a half points at this point. But all right, I hey, play the over here. Hey, Mark, thanks for the call. Appreciate you as always. Thank you, buddy. Yep. I even gave Mark the orange font. You oh, you that? did? No. Yeah. That's cute. I'm trying to be nice. I'm, I'm here for the people. For Bowling Green. Well, I guess it could be for Bowling Green, but I was trying to give him the orange Tennessee font. I'm a nice guy. I don't get the reputation. But... <laughs> Your reputation is much better than it's been at times in the past. That's true. It's moving That's true. on up like the Jeffersons. Oh, look. Got a pick. Oh. oh. The Gophers. Oh, look at that. Goodness. Minnesota getting spunky. 
That would change the Big Ten race a little today, wouldn't it? That would change the national story a good bit. How many of those for Jack Moore to the game for the Buckeyes? Hey, who do we have? Hey, guys, it's Jarrett. Hey, Jarrett, what's up? Not much. Watching this Ohio State-Minnesota game. Have y'all caught any of that? Uh, yeah, we've got it on right here. What are your thoughts on their quarterback play? Ohio State? Yeah. It's just been sort of pedestrian so far. There's a pick. Yeah. yeah I we're, mean, we're ahead of you. Oh, are you ahead of me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I caught. I just kind of caught myself thinking, like, man, if they had a say a Matt Corral, they would be really, really good. Well, that's um, true. What, Chase? I said, yeah, that's true. So would Oregon. Yeah, so would a lot of people probably. So, uh, uniform question for you guys: mm-hmm. Have either of you seen the Air Force uh, Air Power Legacy Series uniforms? For the Navy game? I have not. I feel like I saw this, and I don't remember it. It's been a little while, right? So so the deal is, is they do, they do like an Air Power Legacy thing for the Navy game every year where they honor like a, a weapon system or an Air Force operation. So like last year, it was the Tuskegee Airmen uniforms. And then a couple of years ago, it was the C-17. And then they did uh, the Stealth Bomber one year. So this year, it's a B-52 bomber. For, to uh, commemorate linebacker two during Vietnam, um, they're pretty awesome. It's like a black pant with a. Um, yeah, I've got it up. Um, I'm sending. That's what she said. Yes, I'm good at those tonight. I'm sending Neil the photo now, so he has it. <laughs> okay. And look, I'm tired. Oh, whatever. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, never, it's fine. I'm <laughs> never sorry. thought I'd it's been a day. She said for me. Um, no, he, he's great. He, he never misses one. It, it's most one of the most I'm, annoying I'm, things. I'm six. I'm sorry. I love the so, helmet. So you um, like? Yeah, the helmet is the best part. the The rest of the uniform is kind of uh, the, the the helmet is really good. Um. So, and here I'll give you one more Air Force tip. I don't hate on the, the jersey. He said. The jersey's fine. What's that? Well, I don't hate the jersey. So what is on? So the pants have the a bomb on them. Is that what's down the down the pant? Yeah, that's a that, I, that, that's a bomb. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Hold on, let me let me look. Yeah, I think this it is. is. It's it's the missile or the bomb or whatever. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. It's the, the artillery. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. So on the that's what she said. Uh, if you're in an Air Force flying squadron. And someone says something that's that's what she. Sh- oh, these are those are aircraft. On the oh, they are aircraft. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, those are B fifty twos. Okay. Um. Hey, real quick. So, uh, hey, D Web. Thanks for being a four percenter. We really appreciate you uh, being a part of the show. Go ahead, Jared. Go ahead. Sorry, Jared. Oh no, you're fine. You're good. Got got to got to give shout outs to those uh, super chats. Absolutely. Um. No. So if if you're in the flying squadron and like drinking with all the other pilots at the bar and somebody says something that you would normally say, that's what she said. You say, so to speak instead. So there's that, there's oh, okay. a bit of air force pilot trivia for you. I like that. Yeah. So anyways, all right guys. Yeah. I was just, I was watching this game and just, I, I took Ohio state and the, to cover and the under and they are, the under looks okay, but the uh, Ohio state, not so much. I still think it's going to be okay. But Minnesota is making it a little interesting at the moment. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't doubt that they're going to win. I don't know if they're going to cover a fourteen point line. Sure. Oh, did he catch that? No. Oh, no. wow. Incomplete. Oh man, you guys must be a couple of plays ahead of me. So, and then one one last thing before I go, guys. So, me and my buddies do a pick 'em league where you pick games uh, against the spread and over unders every week. And so, a lot of times, I'm, I'm going with y'all's picks, especially on the SEC games. So, no extra pressure. But you could cost me like a whole dollar per game if you get them wrong. Okay, so. well we we will we will take that into consideration as we put because we put a lot of time and effort into into picks as you can as you I, as you know, especially on the point totals. Like I noticed this week, a bunch of them. Like if you wanted someone to cover or not cover, you would just make your score one point outside of that. And that's that's how we express a lack of confidence. Yeah. That's, 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 uh, Oh, okay. All right, guys. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, enjoy the night. Have All a good right, one. Bye. Yeah. So Navy for their um, 
uniform for the same game. They are honoring. Yes, sir. 14-6. They are doing a uh, a Marine Corps uniform to uh, to honor the Marines and theirs. They did a very poor job of giving us a lot of photos for it, but Bowling Green dominated the second. If they can hold them scoreless here in the last minute, that's a big time win for the point point spread people. Oh, I mean, because they dominated the second quarter against Tennessee. I want to see the side of these helmets I just sent you. On it. Is anything on the side? Hey, who do we have? Lila. Hey, Lila. How are you? Good. Did you I brush your teeth? Question. Who do you think is the best college cheer team? Oh, the best college cheer team. Um, I, is it Kentucky really good? Yeah, Kentucky's really good. I, uh, let me, I tell you what, Lila, I'm going to text my <laughs> daughter, Caroline, who would know. And she'll I'm have gonna, an answer for us? I'm going to see if she'll answer real quick. Can you can you hang on a minute? Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Caroline now because Caroline really likes cheer and dance and gymnastics, so she knows these things. Is it like BYU good? I, did I make that up? I've never heard that about BYU. Okay. I have heard about Kentucky. Yeah, I knew Kentucky was good. So you brushed your teeth, Lila? Yeah. Are you, are you ready for bed? No. Oh, yeah. I don't. How, how old you. are you, Lila? Nine. Nine. How's school going? It's boring. Oh really? <laughs> what's your uh, what's your favorite subject? Um, dismissal. Dismissal. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, Lila. That's good. Um, do you play? Are, are you are you a cheerleader? Or do you play sports? Or do you both? What do you do? Um, I do cheer. That's good. Where do you, where do you? Where do you cheer? Um, I go to Ace Cheer Company. Okay. Oh, I bet that's fun. Where are you from, Lila? Where do you live? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get an answer from my daughter, Caroline, right now. Um, Minnesota, by the way, Lila. Are you watching Minnesota and Ohio State? <laughs> Let me ask you this, Lila. Let's get let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Do, do you like the Big Ten? Um, kind of. Yeah, I do too. I kind of like it. Who's your favorite team in the Big Ten? Um, Bowling Bowling Green. Bowling Green. So you like yeah. the you like the Mac? Yeah, I'm, we're, I'm Mac fan, a Bowling Green fan right now. You're our favorite person who likes the Mac, Lila. Um, you like Iowa? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I like that. Man, that's good with that. That's not, that's not a bad answer. Caroline's in a sorority meeting right now, and I'm not positive that I'm going to get an answer, but I'm working at it. Yeah, you're not the top of her priority at the moment. No, probably not. And she's she's also she's been doing some work for MPW Digital today, so she's already a little busy. Okay. Hey, well, uh, real quick, Lila, what do you have planned for the weekend? You got big weekend plans? Got Because you get an extra day off. You get Monday off because of Labor Day. What do you have planned? Um. Well, I have to go to a football game because my sister's in band. Uh-oh. You know, I really don't. So. Who, who, who does your, what, what high school game are you going to see? Um, Germantown. Oh, okay. That'll be a good game. Who's Germantown playing? Do you know? No. Oh. Lake Child. Oh, okay. They're playing a team from Louisiana. Wow. Okay. Well, hey, listen, Lila, it was great talking to you. You're awesome. We're big fans. Call back again sometime, okay? Okay. All right. Have a great weekend. Okay. All right. That was Lila. Lila's awesome. She wins the caller of the night. My but, favorite but, thing about school dismissal. Howdy, I've never howdy. heard. Hi, uh, howdy, howdy to you, Lila. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That that is that is fantastic. Yeah, that was good. It's a good answer. Okay, and Caroline just answered Lila. If you're listening, uh, she says Kentucky. Okay, so you went with Kentucky. Yeah, so we we got that right. <laughs> did you did did you did you have to broker and barter a little bit to get Rustin to play Oxford in football next? No, weekend? I don't know what I that's mean, about, it, but I, I, it, it's going to be an issue in the family 
thing, I'll tell you that. The Independence Bowl Stadium next next week? I know. I know. So what happened? Who lost the game? John Curtis can't play because they're – They were supposed to play Ruston? Yeah, they were supposed to play Oxford. Oh, they were? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Hey, who, who, at, at, in Shreveport? Uh, yeah, in Shreveport. Okay. And then, you know, because they're in River Ridge and they can't – there's no way, realistically, that yeah. they can okay. plan to have power. Okay. Hey, who's this? Yeah, it was Grind. Hey, Grind, what's up, Grind? You're following uh, Lila. You you can't win this one. You it's 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 a know, man. it's a I no know. contest. I'm already lost, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I didn't I didn't know Lane Kiffin don't went after T. Pinkett, man. He did what now? He what? went after T. Pinkett. That's the quarterback y'all just got, man. He was the quarterback at my high school. The oh, that's great. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the transfer oh. From, oh. from Maryland. Okay, I got you. Got Western you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from my, he my hometown. Went to the same high school, man. Play Chalkville, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. So, 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 so what are they getting? How is he? Yeah. Man, we all felt like he was a little under-recruited coming out of high school. We all felt like he could have been better than uh, – in Maryland because the quarterback for my team, Hayden Moore, you know, who went to Cincinnati, he went – we felt like, you know, he was better than him the whole time. And with his skill set, he's he's twitchy. He has a good arm. He's accurate. I mean, he's a good quarterback. Like, you know, and, make, you know, of course, I'm going to put a little something on it, but, you know, just to be honest with you, like, he's a good quarterback. Like, I feel like it was a good pickup by Lane Kitchen. And what y'all saying, this is his last year. Yeah, this is his last season of eligibility, unless there's some magic way he can get one more year. Um, and I, I, I thought it was significant. I think it's. I think we now know one of the reasons that they kicked us out of practice. Mm. They didn't want us to know that he was there. Um, you think, really? I do. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I can see that though. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I never really thought it was all because of media stuff. The, the the reasons they gave made no sense. And I was like, I don't care, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a scoreboard business. Do do your thing. Because it was like, oh, you guys are talking about depth charts. I'm like, oh, every media that's ever covered a practice talks about who's running with what team or whatever. And the whole injury thing, I was the one that violated the injury deal. And it was incredibly minor. And I basically followed the rules. So I knew that it wasn't really that either. Plus, nobody over there, and believe me, when I've, pissed people off over there i've known it nobody over there seemed overly irritated with me so i didn't think it was that either so turns out it was a personnel thing okay okay well i mean man you just doing your job they can't hit on that no no they didn't and they didn't i mean they it was a very half-hearted effort at hey we kind of had some rules it was it was their heart wasn't in it at all so i knew i knew it had to be something more than that because when they're legitimately mad at you you know yeah, like the Rich okay. Rodriguez okay. film when the thumb up your whatever. Yeah, he. Oh, they yeah, they were they yeah, were really yeah. irritated with that because that was a that was an issue for. A they couple did of days. it during video periods. I mean, Not, I filmed oh, it. He yeah. saw me filming it. <laughs> I mean, we had like ten minutes of practice that was filmable, and he chose those ten minutes. It was the I first mean, thing in two years that was actually entertaining, and so damn right I put it up. And it, will you take it down? I said no. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you do have an audience that you know that you got to you got to please and you know fulfill, fulfill what they want. So yeah, I mean, you giving the people what they want, man. It was entertaining, absolutely. What do you make of this uh, yeah. Minnesota Ohio State first half? Minnesota with the ball, fourteen to ten, minute twenty eight to go uh, around midfield with the I guess a conceivably a chance to take a two score lead at the half. Really? Okay, man. See, I went to the gas station real quick for a little run. So that's what Minnesota do. I oh, yeah. The first game. oh yeah! I now they're ten seven. Now they're first and ten, and at they're the... driving in in territory again. Man, PJ Fleck had some. You know, he let them hang on that drive. They scored a touchdown because I think he went for it on like fourth and one on his own thirty or something like that. It, it was like deep in his own territory when he went for it, but it ended up paying off for him. So fourteen I mean, six is not inspiring right now for for the Vols. No, that was not time. an inspiring second quarter at all for Tennessee. That was that was uh, the 14, Tennessee that I expected. Fourteen six. Fourteen six. Bowling. And frankly, Bowling Green kind of controlled the second quarter. They, no, they totally controlled the second quarter. Yeah, they're not going to cover that. Uh, that thir- whatever that is, that thirty-five point spread. They're not going to cover that. Is it bad that I judge a coach like Heupel when he's clearly let himself go physically? 
Like, I'll be honest, I can't help but think, so you tell your team you want them to be disciplined. You talk about discipline, 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 and then you look like you have no oh, discipline a, it's a, at it's all. It's a part of respect for Lane. He, he he lost weight. He got back in shape. He realized whatever. I mean, because yeah, here's the problem with it, too. <laughs> what worries me about it from a hypo standpoint is – you got the big job. If you get the big job, wouldn't you want to do everything you can in all the ways to try to help that, including presenting yourself well? Just yeah. being healthier and feeling better and needing the energy for the damn rebuild that you've got coming up. Like To me, it's, it's almost like a question of intelligence and work ethic a little bit. It's, it, well, that's what yeah. I mean. You tell your team, hey, we got to work. We got to work. We got to be disciplined. We got all this stuff. You use all those words that everybody uses, and then there's nothing about your personal appearance that appears disciplined at all. Nothing. And I'm not saying he has to look like an Adonis or something. But but players respect coaches, you know, that that get on the bench with them or you know, you know, I mean y'all know what I mean, man. Yeah. I, no, absolutely. Uh it's Joe Milton good, but, the third for Tennessee was ten of fifteen in the first half, a hundred yards. He had a rushing touchdown. Did a lot of damage in the first quarter. He did nothing in the second quarter. Tennessee went they got anemic in the second quarter. They did, man. Well, look, I want uh, Scott Frost to be a lesson to everybody, man. Do not make emotional decisions. This man chose to be the head coach in Nebraska over being the head coach of Florida. Never men make emotional decisions. Uh, you know what? Hugh Freeze turned that, down Florida. That's a great point. He could have gotten on point. out of town. Hugh Freeze did it, too. He, Hugh Freeze made an emotional decision, and that's why he's at Liberty today. He could have gotten away from all that to some extent, gone to Florida. Ole Miss was going to hire Joe McElwain and let it run however it was going to run. <laughs> That's a true story. Never way. make emotional decisions, man. Before I, before I let you guys go, let me. Uh, I want to play a little over-under with you guys. Okay. All right, this is going to be Ole, Ole Miss defense. Okay. All right. So, total yards per game over-under 394. Ooh. Hey, one more time. Total total defense, three hundred ninety-four yards, yards per game for the season. For the season. Okay, that's a very specific thing. So, does that rate somewhere like nationally from last year? Or do you look? You know, it up you know, like, I'm, 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 I'm gonna give y'all four, you know, four over under, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you, you know, okay. you know where, you know where it ranks and everything. Okay. Uh, I would. I, 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 last year, what were they? Do we have any idea? How many yards per game? Yeah, it was almost five hundred. Right? Was it almost five hundred? Uh, SEC schedule, but Liberty slightly over. Yeah, I'm going to go over. Okay. Points per game, 27.9. Ooh, that's about right. Um, I'll go slightly over. What about you, Chase? Yeah, yeah, slightly over. Okay. A plan is rushing yards per game. 158 and a half. Under. Yeah, uh, under, just barely. Okay. And last one, opponents passing yards per game, 235 and a half. Over. Yeah, I think so because I'm not sure they have the defensive pressure to get to the passer. All of those numbers okay. are all of those numbers. I will tell you that all of those numbers are. You are around like a hundredth in the country or something, right? Is that what we were doing? No, that those numbers, and I, I went back to twenty nineteen just because we had, you know, that was the last regular full season. Those numbers, if Ole Miss, you know, hits even with those numbers, would have put them at sixty, you know, sixty or sixty first oh, okay. in yeah. total defense I in twenty nineteen. I will tell you that the numbers you gave were so close to what I would predict. Yeah, you had really good over. That I was really that having was... to think about it because that's a right around that area of. And look, Ole Miss would take every one of those numbers right now because sixtieth is about what I think they they can be. Like I, anything, if, if they're better than fifty to sixty, then they did one hell yeah, of if, a if job. Yeah, if they hit a bunch of unders on those numbers right there, yeah. they're they're a nine ten win team. And Durkin's a head coach next year somewhere, and he's sure. he's he's rehabilitated. Sure. I agree with all that, man. It was it was fun calling you guys. Let's uh, keep enjoying this week one season and keep the good show going, man. All right, all right Grant. Thanks it, so Ron. much. Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, because my over under on points is like twenty eight and a half, kind of in my mind. Twenty nine. It's anything under thirty. If it's if it's above thirty, it's trouble. If it's sure. if it's under twenty seven, it's pretty good. 
frankly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the sweet spot. So when he gave that number, I was like, oh, you're right there. And you play two teams that, I mean, all jokes aside, in the non-con, you can at least score points. I mean, if Louisville gets into the 30s, nobody's shocked at all. And, I mean, Malik Willis and Liberty are going to score a few points. I mean, yeah. you're not shutting them out. Yeah. That the running number is a big number. Like if they if if they hit the over on that number that he gave, like one 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 fifty two or whatever he said just then, I'd, uh, it's a lot. But, but I'm not confident in that. No, I'm not just either. Defensive line. I'm just. That's the question to me. I mean, I I would love to have Sam Williams' stats. Is he actually an effective pass rusher or not this season consistently? Yeah, I'd like to see Lakia Henry stats. Ooh. Really? Yeah. How much is he on the field? Is he is he effective? Having Cam- for that matter, even Cedric Johnson, just to see, did he actually take the step we think he might could have taken? Sure, I don't know. We'll find oh, absolutely. out. Absolutely. The uh, butcher versus the spin instructor being uploaded now at uh, okay MPW Digital. Okay, thanks to our um, social manager, social media manager. He's done a hell of a job. Put some yeah. video together. Our Instagram account's rolling. If you're on Instagram, follow us at MPW Digital. Up to about 500 or so. Yeah. Give or yeah. take. Considering we, a week ago we were at zero, it was pretty good. What'd you do to get booted off Twitter, Mark? That's a hell of a stat. He says Ryan Day is undefeated against the Big Ten with an average score of 43 to 14. Say that again. Ryan Day is undefeated against the Big Ten, and the average score is 43-14. to 14. Is that right? Son of a... I have zero music... Oh, Chance Campbell, not me. I thought we were making a joke. Except, so, yeah, no, that's not... That's not my thing. Oh, I didn't know that about Chance and guitars. I'll ask. Yeah. I mean, we got we got a lot of weeks. We'll need some material. He's been great. Yeah. Um, he's been he's been really fun to talk to. I've enjoyed talking to him. Great. I say kid, and he's he's a young man. I shouldn't say kid, but he's really really a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed talking to him, and I think he's going to play a lot. So we're fourteen ten at halftime. Fourteen ten at the half. Probably the first time the Minnesota band's been on the field since the twenty nineteen season. Yeah. Probably a nice night up there right now. You think? You think they're having fun? I mean, no, no, I mean, weather. yeah, no, it's, this is great. I mean, no one had this last year. This is cool. I mean, look at all the, the the people. There's a big crowd there. They're excited. They're up over Ohio State at the half. Their band's on the field. It's got to having a night. Yeah, it's yeah, got to yeah. feel like so refreshingly normal, right? They'll probably miss a few eight a.m. business classes in the morning. Yeah, you. <laughs> Odds are not good for you're that. Not, you're not meeting those classes, are you? Uh, Don't you just, hey, we'll make this the up. The teacher a, that has sense goes, okay. We'll make this up another day. Yeah, just yeah. take one. We'll figure it out. Interesting game, though. Put a little pressure on Ohio State. Oh. Make them think. Yeah, but, but Buckeyes minus 14 is not off the table. I'm just going to tell you. They can score points in a hurry. Oh, no, that the line is still very it's in play. It's very much in play. I, the the I, one that doesn't feel in play is the Tennessee line. Yeah, feels 0-1 right there. Yeah. Um, feels like Campbell's already off to a 1-0 start over Greg. Greg laid him. Campbell took him. Taking in all those games was probably the right play. I just, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's. Yes, fall in Minneapolis is fantastic. Yes. It's just wonderful. Winter's not. But fall is. Oh, no. Great time of the year to go see a Twins game. Rebel Zero Zero says those band kids work their asses off in the summer and just in fall just to perform for 10 minutes at half. Glad they're getting to be out there again. I'm, I'm completely with you. Totally. So Will took the Buckeyes minus the 14, and he's he's on the ledge. You're, you're okay right now, yeah. but they got to get going. It's okay, though. Needs to happen quickly. Yeah, C.J. Stroud right now for Ohio State. 8 of 14 for 58 and a pick at half. That will get you replaced in a hurry. Might get a chance to see. um, Jack Miller. Mr. Miller. Hey, who do we have? 
Hey, this is Walt in Birmingham. How y'all doing? Hey, Walt. Y'all doing all right tonight? Yeah, we're doing good. How about you? I'm doing all right. Um, you know, I was hoping uh, I saw somebody responded with a, the first comment that popped into everybody's minds when they saw the first Neil's picks uh, post go up in the season was, you know, Nick's picks, obviously. Um, I kind of <laughs> thought y'all might. Instead of just the four of y'all, y'all two, Zach and uh, Jeffrey, y'all might have additional two, you know, Nick and Seth taking picks as well, and they just be your your alter egos, so y'all could corner the market on on all the picks. It's a but, thought. Um, that's just that's just a lot more work. That's if right. You, yeah. If you yeah. want to know the then truth, you have to tally all of them too. Yeah. So yeah, probably not worth it. Um, though I definitely think a good punishment if y'all went back to trying to figure out. You know, the loser getting punished in some way uh, for an event or the picks column would be um, Neil basically having to be the biggest Bowden supporter uh, at Louisiana Monroe for a, a game weekend. Um, you know, shirt, hat, everything. You could even dress up like he used to at, at Akron or before that. <laughs> Um, That's not bad. Like, uh, who wasn't it? Ryan Brown that had to go to yeah. the uh, Mac game and yeah, I've got to do that. The Afro and all that. Yeah, I've got to go to Buffalo this year for a for a game um, because mm. of losing the tournament, and I still have to do Dragon yeah. Con. But Dragon Con, Dragon Con turned into a a COVID nightmare this year, and I said, let's I'm just sure. let's just punt till it's not a COVID nightmare. Yeah, right. So. Um, one thing I was thinking about watching this Ohio State Minnesota game was not about four hours ago. I have a friend from uh, high school that that every year we basically just do a quick draft of who we think the conference champions are going to be. So I mean, obviously we're each only making five picks, but Ohio State was one of mine. So if this holds, uh, the college football world can can thank me for for jinxing them. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Jeffrey is sitting at home somewhere absolutely hammering Ohio State minus whatever in the second half. Um, that feels oh, like a good play. That does feel like a really good play. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is, but I know Jeffrey's hammering at it. Um, so one thing I, I thought about earlier, uh, you know, somebody asked on the last pod what the preseason, you know, build up to this season felt like. I think the the seasons they pointed out were nine, fourteen, and fifteen. I think Chase said fourteen, um, and I'd agree with that for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, and and one thing that made me think of you know the first game when we played Boise in Atlanta, both through four picks and people started freaking out and doing the whole bad bow, you know, good bow thing. How many? Uh, and I guess the better question is at what point in the game, if Corral threw, let's say, a second interception. Monday night, do people really start, you know, running away with the narrative? Uh, I mean, obviously, if it's a, you know, Hail Mary at the end of the second quarter or something, nobody's going to kind of blame that. But but if it happens, even if they're deflections, I can see people, you know, taking it too far. And, and I guess it depends on what the score is at that point, too. I think it I would mean, take if a we third. win in a blowout, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think a it third. takes a third, maybe even a fourth. And it would yeah. depend on what it looked like and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. If it's the Arkansas game last year, then all of a sudden that narrative gets a lot harder. For I mean, I to, expect them to try to, to run shake. it down Louisville's throat if they're really going to drop eight, though, at least from a yeah. scheme standpoint. Yeah, for sure. When I when I saw Matt, uh, I think it was Neil's column uh, recently when he said, you know, he's expecting a bunch of people dropping back. I just figure all the eating grass stuff that Ely and Parrish have been talking about is, is – that's when we're going to see that. Yeah, and that's where you you right. make them pay, right? If they if they're going to drop right. eight, you go okay. We'll nickel and dime you to death until you get sick of it, and, and then, then we'll and, hit, then, and we'll then, go we'll, top. then we'll yeah, you know, score from yeah. far, as they say. I mean, you, that was his yeah. problem against Arkansas last year. Was he just kind of kept trying to force it a little bit and just take it? Yeah, and he learned a lesson. I mean, yeah. I've said this all along. I mean, the NFL guys are thrilled that the Arkansas game happened because they they know that opponents are going to try to emulate it. And right, you know they want to they want to see know, what, how he handles for adversity. Matt, because he can build his own storyline as far as you know going through that adversity like he did last year and being able to. Obviously, you'd rather have just you know seasons of clean games, but that that's not always um, you know how things happen. And, no, absolutely. The NFL you know, wants to know how you can handle you know a bad drive, a bad decision. Can you can you erase it? Can you move on? They, yeah. They, 
Because, you know, you're going to play in that league. You're going to play great defenses every single week. You're, 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 you're going to get schemed to death. Someone's going to – they're going to trick you. They're going to get you. How quickly can you get to the sideline, look at the iPad, see what happened, fix it in your mind, and not do it again? That's what they want to know. Right. So, um, another thing I was thinking about watching this Tennessee bowling uh, green, you know, barn burner they've got going on on the SEC network. Um, uh, so, back in 14, the last time we played Tennessee, um, I had a, a buddy from college come. Uh, he's a big UT fan. Uh, he's a, one of those people that's from Memphis uh, that's a Memphis basketball fan and a Tennessee football fan. So, I'm, I'm guessing uh, – Y'all are familiar with that type of person, maybe. Yeah. But um, similar to the Alabama football fan and the Kentucky basketball fan, I guess, uh, on, a, on a different mindset. But he came. He wore his, you know, white Tennessee shirt with a little orange tee on it. And, and luckily the defense, you know, shut Tennessee down uh, pretty easily that night. So, But I've agreed this year to go to Neyland with him for the first time for Lane's return to – Knoxville and uh there's a few other people going too but I'm I'm still trying to assess how obnoxious you know uh, how appropriately obnoxious I can be basically in the build-up to that game um yeah you know, I, I don't I, I don't think I should be too worried about that one sitting here watching a uh, Bowling Green drive down the field some but uh but um, I, I, you know, uh, I'm still. I think I'm going to wait and see how uh, conference play goes before I really start talking any crap to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you, the week one overreactions are are yeah are always a, a dangerous thing. That being said, Tennessee, man, <laughs> when you're not expected to be any good and you're not any good. Then you can read from that. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, like if Alabama looks sloppy for two and a half quarters Saturday, they earned a the benefit of the doubt. The people that, that go, they're suck. I'm like, stop, just stop. Don't just go right. no further. You're going to eat these words. But when a team that you think is not going to look good looks not good, yeah, yeah, we'll probably read, like yeah, read something into it. And so this friend also said recently, if he could go back in time and change one thing in Tennessee's past coaching hires. It would be go back to 08, you know, end of 08, beginning of 09, whenever they hired Lane, and hire Gary Patterson instead, um, which uh, I didn't even think was a thing, frankly, considering Gary Patterson has turned down every job that's come his way. But he maintains that Gary Patterson would have taken it. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, obviously that would make the UT job a ridiculously more stable job the past 12 years. But um, – what do you think, you know, the ceiling for somebody like Gary Patterson would be at Tennessee? I mean, this friend thinks it would be Phil Fulmer. No. Deuce. That era. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think that's I, I think what he would have been. About. I think he would have been solid. Era. Yeah, I think he would have been solid. But I, I, don't, I don't know that that era is possible really again. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's just me. I, I just think a lot, of, a lot of what made Tennessee so great in the Peyton Manning era. 